With Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse being out for quite a while, Marvel Legends finally felt safe to make figures out of the more surprising characters in the movie. But if you're going to be doing so, you need to be going 100%. As the release date steadily approached and Amazon sent me the notification of these guys shipping out, I told myself, okay, maybe finally I'll slow down, chop it up a bit to make things a little bit more cohesive and kind of give both of these guys their own separate reviews. That way they're a little bit on the shorter side and I can also break down a few of the little minute details and give each one their time of day. But in order for me to be able to do so, each figure needs to have details and things to talk about and as I played with the figures I told myself no I'm gonna have to pull a veto here and compile them both into their own rather sizable ranty video and you'll see exactly what I mean in a second here because these were the two figures out of the brand new wave of Across the Spider-Verse that I was genuinely excited for because they were brand new figures for very unique characters to the movie, one of which was one of my favorite characters out of the entire movie, Spider-Man India, aka Paviter Pravarkar. I'm hoping I'm not butchering that name. But he was a standout. I absolutely adored him in the movie. So when they announced that they were finally making a Marvel Legends, I was like, yep, day one pre-order, and maybe I'll toss in Miles G. Morales from the ending of the movie. But the others didn't really speak to me whatsoever because they were kind of like reissues, remasters with like some slightly different head sculpts, paint applications to fill in the rest of the wave that I just didn't personally feel like I needed to move myself to, to purchase. I really didn't make any kind of moves on them. So I thought these are the two and that is it. But man, it really did feel like Marvel Legends was either preoccupied with other things, Dead Point Wolverine, I don't know, but... The B team, or maybe even the C team, were responsible for this outing. And let me clarify further by starting off with my favorite character that I was most looking forward to, Spider-Man India. You got him right here, decked out with the mainly blue and red attire, but of course using inspiration and motivation from the Indian culture as far as the design with the, with the wrap right here around the waist. Kind of like, I don't know the exact terminology, but it's just using so many different details as far as bands and, you know, wristbands, armbands, even ankle bands. Just so much influence from Indian culture and, and Indian heritage that really speaks to the character, but at the same time still retains an awful lot of the aesthetics that you've come to know for a spider suit. So you have an awful lot of webbing. Of course, you got the symbols there on the front of the back, but still kind of, like I said, utilizing the Indian sort of style and influence for the legs, for the way that it's kind of decorated with this kind of gold accented outline to it, as well as, like I said, the bands around, very well decorated as far as the gold plating. And I love the additional detail of him actually already sporting the dimensional jumper on his wristband. So that's a nice little addition that I believe all the brand new figures are now sporting. I guess you can consider that a minor spoiler that they were trying to withhold with the first wave. So now they're, they felt safe to include with the brand new waves. But as you kind of navigate down, you see that, yeah, they were able to really represent the character pretty fondly. Except I do think that they kind of left a lot to be desired when it came to the likeness. Because for the most part, you guys remember me. I was sort of praising Marvel Legends for the way that they were able to translate the animated characters from the movie to figure forms. Specifically with some of those earlier head sculpts of Wave 1 with the Miguel O'Hara head sculpt, even though it's a Spider-Man 2099 masked head. But then you have the alternate heads for Gwen and Miles from that wave that really looked pretty nice. It, I really could not complain too much as far as the way that they looked, except the actual technicalities of how they applied the paint. I thought it was a little too reflective, a little smudgy, and it doesn't look like they took that into consideration with either of these characters, not just Spider-Man India, but also Miles G. Morales, where... The actual likeness of the character is most definitely there as far as the facial construction and, like I said, how they managed to design it on top of the head sculpt. But it's rather the paint applications themselves on a technical level, just a little glossy. So from certain angles, he looks nice, but then other angles where the light's really hitting head on, it just looks like it's bouncing and reflecting a little bit too much that it's practically like both head sculpts on Miles G and Spider-Man India kind of have glare coming off of them so you almost have to wear glasses to get a decent look at the head sculpt and the likeness to actually appreciate it. So 
easily that's my favorite part apart from like I said those nitpicks that I was having about the actual reflections of the paint but in terms of the overall aesthetical look of the character I really like the hair the way that it's kind of held together and sculpted it's just like I said it's emulating that style that the character had that is very charming he was funny he was likable but once you feel the figure and kind of take a look at the entirety of the thing the best way that I can really kind of say what I have on my mind here is that even though it's not a bad figure to give us a Spider-Man India to put up on the shelf next to our Spider-Man Legends from across the Spider-Verse, it just has this very Happy Meal to kids toy, kids meal toy feel to the entirety of the figure. I don't know what it is. I've seen Marvel Legends themselves do better and I've covered it on the channel, so to speak. Think back to my reviews of the Let There Be Carnage, Carnage from Venom, Let There Be Carnage, and the Deadpool. Like those figures, they genuinely felt like Marvel Legends that felt like they matched the price. The scale is not 100% there. He might be to scale with Miles, but not necessarily to Miguel O'Hara 2099. He looks like he might even be a little shorter than Gwen. I don't know what it is, but there's just something about the feel of the plastic, the feel of the detailing, how plain the overall suit is, despite still, like I said, look, I don't know. I, there was something about maybe the paint applications they could have added to give him a much more cell shaded look to look a little bit more closer to the way that he looked like in the movie. But apart from that, it's like they chose the bare minimums of the stamps as far as the symbol right here on the shoulders the spider symbol again of course the iconic ones on the front and the back and then the color scheming and then that was it i don't know what it is but specifically around here in the leg area there's just something about it that i'm like i feel like we used to get these figures out of my kids meal at mcdonald's or burger king and here we are now paying 24.99 for it because we just like the character all that much and take a look at the feet. The feet even have this quality to the way that the the toes are kind of etched in there that I'm like, why do they feel very frivolous? There's something about the quality that, to me, it just feels very Happy Meal-ish. And the articulation doesn't do anything to kind of move the needle in a much more positive direction. Because you have the ball joint that allows the head to rotate 360 as well as slightly look up but not as much before it kind of gets removed a little bit there spoiler and can also nudge down slightly and a little bit of pivoting and tilting side to side and then the arms can definitely rotate 360 no problem as well as extend towards the sides because of the hinge inside of the shoulder itself as well as the biceps they can fully rotate 360 and then you do have two elbows joints right about right there but they do have that slight issue that I've come across with not just Marvel Legends, but even a couple of other characters where for some reason only one of them fully bends when you go for the elbow joint. You kind of have to give it a little bit of an extra press to go for the much higher shoulder, I mean, I'm sorry, elbow joint to be able to bend all the way upwards. Of course, no problems with the wrist. You're definitely able to rotate the hands in place 360 as well as bend at the hinge inwards and upwards. And to bring things back to the positive light... Spider-Man India here sports a really awesome torso joint. These two joints right here at the mid-torso cut as well as the waist cut are in my opinion some of my most favorite Marvel Legends joints that I've seen in quite some time. Which is a little bit of a shame to say that it comes on a buck that feels a little cheap but at least the motion and the ability to move the torso all the way 360 in a ratcheted position but still be able to bend it quite generously and crunch it inwards about there and then extend it towards the back right about there as well as side to side slightly but then you get even further more movement via the waist joint as you can kind of see it right about right there so you get quite a bit of extension and crunching on the abdominals right about right there as well as crunching on the sides of the obliques more so on the waist top leg joints can still move upwards about that far but they kind of come into a little bit of a restriction mo moving towards the back because of the way that this butt sculpt is kind of getting in the way extension towards the sides is generous kind of stops right about right there and then you do have knee joints you technically have two that are fully able to bend all the way up and unlike the elbow joints when you kind of give it the press they both move in conjunction with each other and if you want to get a little official, I don't know if this was intended, but you technically do have a little bit of a swivel joint right above the knee below this 
part of the, I don't want to call them shorts or pants. I know that there's a technical term for it, but I don't know it off the top of my head. But I just know that right below it, sculpt it right into the leg. You can technically rotate it right about right there. And you're definitely going to have to rely on it for any kind of horizontal swiveling because, of course, it is a Marvel Legends. So you're going to have the ankle joint that allows the foot to pivot downwards and upwards a pretty modest amount, but no kind of rotation whatsoever. You can technically pivot it inwards and outwards like that, but that's really about it. So articulation pretty much f falls in line with everything else that Marvel Legends has always done, except it just feels like it's shrunken down. Like it's just, like I said, it's kind of placated to this sort of Happy Meal quality. But at least Spider-Man India is able to charm us not only with, like I said, the persona behind the character in the movie, but also a few of the accessories that he comes with. You'll notice right there that he technically has two kind of holding, kind of gripping hands on by default. And you can use those hands to hold the yo-yo weapon or, again, this probably has its official term that is known from Indian culture, but I just don't know it at the top of my head. But I just know that it is sculpted in this default kind of way where the yo-yo piece is right here in the middle. So if you're going to be posing it with them, he technically has these two ends here that are kind of in this hook manner to be able to fit into his gripping hands so you're gonna have to pose them in a way where it just looks like this piece is always in the middle so it's kind of in motion but if you ever want to have it be like at the end you technically cannot move it whatsoever so you're a little limited in that sense but at the same time it is a marvel legends if anything i do expect the figure arts to maybe have some kind of functionality to be able to move this piece as far as the detailing behind the accessory it's pretty decent like i said you got the uh, yellow kind of opaque finish to the yo-yo piece right here in the middle but then you have uh, webbing with actual stringing in the middle right there via this white piece that is actually pretty flexible and if you don't feel like posing it with this piece you technically also have two additional hand accessories one of them is the open left hand as well as the fisted right hand so you can swap those in but to me in my opinion the best accessory to really deck him out with is of course the masked head which technically came on the side so he doesn't come with the default but swapping it is no problem just fitting it on the head joint right there and the head sculpt itself is actually really painted beautifully as far as the decorations to again kind of pay back to his original look in the movie but at the same time having the really cool mask so i really do appreciate that as well as the fact that they were able to retain his fabulous hair and there you go. Look how cool that is. And it's able to rely on a little bit of that charm. Like I said, thinking back to the way that he was in the movie, but also because the accessories kind of help out in that regard. You can't really say that much with Miles G. Morales here as far as that charm. Because A, not only did he not really have that much screen time to begin with, especially appearing in just the literal last scene of the movie... But on top of that, he's not really relying on charm in and of himself because we get it from the bat that he's not going to be a protagonist. If anything, he's probably going to be our, I don't want to say our main antagonist because that's reserved for Spot, but he's going to make it a whole lot more difficult for Miles to get out of his uh, out of his predicament in Beyond the Spider-Verse. For now, though, we just know that this is probably going to be a very tragic character considering his alternative background. And so far from what Marvel Legends was able to work with, not only with the limited amount of screen time that he has in the movie, but also with whatever he was probably sent they were probably sent over by Sony Imageworks or Sony Animation and Marvel, this is, like I said, a pretty decent outcome but it still retains the main crux that i was having with spider-man india over there where he just has this happy meal quality to him that just feels like i said very frivolous very whatever in hand that just never speaks marvel legends to me again coming from most recently reviewing the carnage from let there be carnage and that movie legacy deadpool granted it's a reissue but still that carnage as well as even some of the retro card stuff like the target exclusive carnage or the recently released walmart exclusive venom and then boiling it out to this it just makes it much more abundantly clear that we're dealing with completely different teams and it just feel for the price point it just feels like we need to be, you know, kind of pricing these things and evaluating evaluating them accordingly because, I, I mean, not everything is made equal. It's the equivalent of, like, when a AAA game comes out, it's going for the 60 70 bucks. Okay, it's AAA. But you have an indie game, 
and it comes out for about 20 bucks because it's meant to be like a short two to three hour experience, okay, why can't figures be doing the exact same thing? I just, I, blah. On the positive side, like I said, most of the details that you were able to pick up on with him being on screen are exactly here. You see the prowl aesthetic to the overall suit, the spikes on the collar, purple with a little bit of gray, black, a few accents here and there. I'm actually kind of interested, I don't know the exact background here, but I do like that you have this square with the number two. It's almost like lifted from the periodic table right there. So maybe it's kind of harkening back to how, in a matter of speaking, Miles was always kind of interested in science and things like that. So regardless of whatever universe he's in, he's always going to have a fondness for science. Except here, he might be utilizing it for evil to generate an awful lot of his weapons, including the actual claws and gauntlets that he's got powered up here on the side. Which, in my opinion, for a Marvel Legends, like I said, they're pretty decent as far as sculpting and paint applications but they could still be done better especially for the price that you're paying and still have this dainty kids meal quality feel to the overall especially this whole area right here going back to what i was mentioning with spider-man india at least over there you have the aesthetic of the uh, outfit with the influence the the way that it just kind of transcends over here it just feels way too thin and frivolous again going back to the way that Things just feel kind of half fast with him. That I'm like, I'm not even sure about this character. I'm really not sure about, at least the figure itself. And similar to Spider-Man India, you have the head sculpt right here where they did a decent job of trying to do the Miles G. Morales, except the expression I think could have been done a little bit better. He's looking a little too pouty, a little too blue steel from <laughs> Zoolander. And he never really made that expression, in my opinion. I, I, and trust me, I saw the movie recently again with the live orchestra and this like concert thing that they're doing. And even in that scene, he had very sharp lines to his much more jagged and, and rough look because of the way that he's meant to be a different Miles, a much more evil, antagonizing Miles. So I'm kind of have expecting him to have a much meaner look, except here it just looks like he's trying to riz up a girl. I don't know, <laughs> as the kids like to say. I can't believe I just said that. So the expression could have been done a little bit better. And then on top of that, like I mentioned before with Spider-Man India, he's got a little bit of that glossy sheen to the paint applications, which are not bad in their own right. I just wish that they'd gone with like a different printer or a different process. I don't know what the case may be, but it just has too much of a sheen specifically around the lips that makes it look like he's got a little bit of lip gloss. But I do like the hairstyle. I do like the applications and the way that they kind of sculpted and even etched out a little bit of the dreads and kind of like the braiding that he has here on the top of the head, as well as on the side of the scalp. And then of course the braids. However, the braids do kind of get in the way a little bit when it comes to the articulation of the head. It still allows it to rotate 360 as well as being able to tilt up and down a bit more generously than that of Spider-Man India. And because of that, it's probably in due part to the fact that he's missing an awful lot of the head that was, I mean, I'm sorry, an awful lot of the hair that was sculpted with Spider-Man India. But at the same time, in the wrong hands, I feel like these, these dreads could be torn out. So do be careful with them because they do feel a little bit on the delicate side, especially when they come into contact with this very elongated collar. But once you're able to do that, the head articulation is actually not too bad. The arms can fully rotate 360, no problem, even with the coat kind of gripping onto it, as well as extension on the hinge that allows it to fully extend even beyond the 180 degree angle. So that's actually pretty dope. We get our first major difference where we don't have any kind of bicep swivel, but they did bake it into the top of the elbow joint here. So you only get one elbow hinge that is able to bend 90 degrees, but you do have the swiveling right above it, right about right there. And then, of course, the wrist joints that is able to rotate the hand 360 as well as being able to bend inwards and upwards. Then the torso extension, which is much different than that of Spider-Man India. Unfortunately, it has that classic upside-down hinge that allows it to crunch inwards and upwards. The crunching inwards is almost a full 90-degree bend that is a little on the abnormal side. But extension kind of stops a little shy right about right there because of the way that the coat kind of gets in the way. But right below that, you do have the waist cut that allows it to fully rotate 360 on this ratcheted kind of motion. But sadly, the torso articulation that I really liked about Spider-Man India is nowhere to be found. So you do have to make that compromise. When it comes to the top legs, they do extend pretty fondly towards the top right about right there. And even with the ass sculpt right there kind of getting in the way, it does extend towards the back a bit more generously than that of Spider-Man India. And even extension towards the sides 
feels like it can go a little beyond, but just mind, a few of these straps are just kind of dangling here off the side and the waist belt here. Unlike Spider-Man India though, they took the swiveling and allowed it to happen here a little higher up towards the area where you do have the thighs. So you can rotate the legs right about right there. And you technically do have two knee joints. However, the top one is a little on the tough side, kind of similar to Spider-Man India's elbows. So you kind of have to give it a little bit of an extra press. But when you do so, you can technically still bend the knees right about right there, fully all the way up. And they are pretty firm in place. But of course, being a Marvel Legends, you got the ankle joints that can move the foot up and down and slightly pivot inwards and outwards almost all the way like so, but no real rotation. You're going to have to rely on the thigh swivels. Now, similar to Spider-Man India, he does have his own assortment of accessories, except... I don't even know if I favor the accessories all that much, save for one. And the reason for that being is that the extra two hands that he comes with are... Well, I mean, they're pretty default for any Marvel Legends, but in a rare case, I feel like I prefer the default hands because the extra hands happen to be one fisted right hand and then one kind of semi-gripping left hand. And they're, again, molded and painted pretty decently for any Marvel Legends. But you check out the claws here, and in my opinion, the claws just look a little bit more badass that he came with by default out of the box. So I feel like... I almost want to kind of leave those on for specific posing and to kind of decorate them out a little further. Of course, he comes with the alternate head sculpt that is <laughs> Spider-Man India. Oh, okay, that's going to be a fun head swap for later B-roll. But what I meant to grab was the alternate head sculpt with the Prowler mask, which of course is still replicating the dreads there on top. But this time he's sporting the mask with the Prowler aesthetic. That, in my opinion, looks pretty cool as far as the way that the panels are kind of added, they're painted out. And in my opinion, it just kind of completes the ensemble. And again, it kind of negates the overall complaint that I was having with the glossy finish on his face. And if you want to make him look a little bit more accurate to the scene in the movie, he comes with the backpack, which... I don't know the purpose of the backpack as far as the things that are kind of sticking out of it. I just know that it looks like the panels could be removable but they are not so do be careful to not give it too much of a of a warping or a peeling because it does feel like one of the panels can come off but i don't believe they're designed to be that way so don't make the same mistake of partially removing a little bit of the adhesive in there it's just there for show and the overall backpack itself is again like the wording that i'm using a lot in this video painted and sculpted pretty modestly and fitting it on, I, I thought was going to be a little scary because it looks like the backpack straps here a little bit on the narrow side. But all you got to really do is just kind of put the arms together, kind of warp it in a way and flex it in a way that at least helps it kind of slide right in through. Which is, again, a lot more intimidating to think than to actually do. So you just kind of... Give it a little bit of a press here. And once you do, there you go. You can argue that both of these guys definitely look a lot better once you sport on the masks because they just fit their characters a lot more simpler and straight to the point the way that they came across in the movie and just overall look a bit more badass. But especially with Miles G, I still can't really remove myself from feeling like I am buying really overpriced kids meal toys. And I am thoroughly disappointed, especially since with Miles G, you really need to be able to make an impression considering that the guy was only in one scene. And we can generate all these theories and it's doing a very compel compelling job of making us care about a character who only appears in one scene and is being set up to be an antagonist, don't get me wrong, but at least there's, there's this tragic level to the character that makes me go, okay, I can definitely see why they wouldn't make a figure out of him. But not like this, man. Not not, not like this. this. It genuinely feels like they got the C team working on this while A and B team are probably working on the Deadpool and Wolverine stuff. The other comic stuff that has been re recently revealed at New York Comic Con and a bunch of other conventions, has proposed, etc. Maybe the Black Series for Star Wars. I don't know. But I, th these are the two brand new characters. I wasn't really moved in any kind of direction and the guy keeps on falling. I'm sorry. Again, kind of speaking to the daintiness of the legs, this overall thing. I just feel like I can't really pose him and take advantage of any of the articulation considering just how thin and frail he really feels. And again, for the $24.99, to tell me that this is worth the same price as... The Venom that recently got released for the retro card or just any other 
figure within this bracket or even within the $30 bracket, I'm like, come on guys. And that's already coming from someone who was apprehensive about the second wave. So if this is what you do with brand new characters, I, this kind of seals the deal as whether or not I was compelled to pick up that brand new Miles that has like a baby face for some reason, the Gwen with the different hair and comes with Lila, the alternate head sculpt Hobie and Miguel O'Hara. I just, I now officially do not give a damn about those figures. All right, you can not even probably for clearance later down the line. These were the only two that were speaking to me. And even they ended up being a little bit of a disappointment. And even though we don't have any kind of confirmation on Miles G. Morales here, this makes me all the more excited for the upcoming SH Figure Arts Spider-Man India and what they could potentially do with that character as far as making the little details, the color. Okay, I'm done. I'm done with that mother I'm done. As far as Spider-Man India and that figure arts, I'm looking forward to seeing what things they can do as far as details, accessories, that extra level of oomph. Provided that we don't get what we got with Spider-Punk, Spider where it was a little too close to the Marvel Legends, and in this occasion, I don't want them to get that close. I don't know. I just don't really see Miles G being in my collection all that much longer. But Spider-Man India will probably be saved to see exactly how it compares to the figure arts later on. Let me know what you guys think of these brand new figures within Wave 2 of Across the Spider-Verse. Are you going to pick them up? Do you think they're worth it? Or do you think that they half-assed it? And they just kind of chunked them out here at the last minute. Are there any more Across the Spider-Verse figures that you would like to see Marvel Legends tackle? Or at this point, they should probably just move on until the eventual third movie gets released. Whenever that manages to happen. While you're down there letting me know, hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed the video. Thumbs down if you did not. Shout out to our executive producers over at the level to tier that helps support not only the channel but also this video tom bowling and as always you guys know what to do stay humble and i'll catch you on the next one